you the latest news from Bucks County, this is the Courier Times Update with Rachel Cannell. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rachel Cannelli reporting from the Courier Times newsroom with your news update for Monday, March 11th. Our top story today, police in neighboring Montgomery County need your help in finding a Hatfield man who allegedly stabbed a 33-year-old woman in the neck with a knife on Sunday. Police have issued an arrest warrant for 50-year-old Thomas Young. He was last seen driving a black 2009 Honda Accord with a Pennsylvania license plate GKS 8099. The victim was flown to the hospital of the University of Pennsylvania, but there's no word on her condition. Thomas is being charged with attempted murder and aggravated assault in the attack. Reporters Matt Coughlin and Bill Devlin have that story and will be following it, so keep checking BucksCountyCourierTimes.com for updates. Two Bristol Township residents have been sent to Bucks County Prison after police say they violently beat their roommate. Police believe Christine Carey and Jerron Thompson severely injured the victim after attacking the person in the face and head with a crowbar. The pair is being charged with aggravated assault, which is a first-degree felony. Reporter Danny Adler has that story on our website. Do you understand the power behind power of attorney? It can be helpful to have someone take over your private affairs or business or legal matters when it's done correctly. But as reporter Joe Chevalier tells us in a must-read story online, some people take advantage. And we have two local cases in Bristol and Ben Salem where victims were bilked out of hundreds of thousands of dollars to prove it. Joe talks to lawyers about what you need to know before you give that kind of power to another person. If you're struggling to adjust to the daylight savings spring forward time change, you can at least enjoy some spring-like temperatures. Today we'll see some clouds, but a high near 61. Showers are likely tonight with a low around 48. After almost four years of fundraising and renovations, the Washington Crossing Historic Park has finally reopened its state-of-the-art visitor center and museum. Reporter Hema Duarte talked to officials about what it took to get the public back in the building. To me, it's about bravery and pride, the same pride that the troops had when they rose up under all, against all odds and, and made that turning point in the American Revolutionary War. And it was a brave group of people that got together and worked very hard to make this happen. That's very true. Three. Hey. And the work continues. The exhibit needs another two to three million dollars to be completed. You can check out Hema's story at BucksCountyCourierTimes.com for information on how to donate. Speaking of donations, the Middletown Community Foundation's scholarship program has helped plenty of high school seniors pay for college and now they want to help adults hoping to better their situation by going back to school or learning a trade. Reporter Christian Menno spoke with Dawn Kelly, who's principal of Carl Sandburg Middle School and a member of the board of directors. With economic times being the way they are, we all know someone who's been laid off or, or affected by budget cuts. So the foundation recognized the need to help others, and so we established an adult scholarship program um, for adults who are looking to go back to school or learn a trade and get themselves back into the workforce. We are now accepting applications, and um, our hope is that Middletown residents can get back to school and get back to work as quickly as possible. The deadline to apply for student scholarships is May 1st. You can find out more in Christian's story online. Sticking with ways to save during these tough economic times, columnist Marion Callahan visits Chalfont's Restore, where deep discounts on household items are plentiful. She talks with shoppers who boast about their bargains for this week's Saving Bucks. You name it, you just might find it here at Habitat for Humanity's Restore in Chalfont. Everything that you see in our store has been donated. So therefore, our prices are 50 to 75 percent below any retail cost that you will find. Our paperbacks are five for a dollar, our hardbacks are five for two dollars. You can buy a paint in here for five dollars a gallon. You can buy sofas in here for a hundred dollars. You can buy chairs for twenty dollars. And if the prices don't lure you, well, it's mission will. All of the proceeds go to helping build homes for the needy. You can find good quality antique furniture here if you really look. Sometimes you can pick up a chair for $5 and take it home and turn it into something that you would buy in a store for a few hundred dollars. 
In high school sports, Archbishop Woods girls basketball team's new rotation seemed to be working out pretty well. They got a big win over Pope John Paul II in the state tournament opener. Sports reporter Dan Duncan caught up with Madison Tamburini and Jackie Pearson to talk about their coaches' changes. When we come in and we have 10 people that can play the same like amount and the same way, play well, shoot the ball, that can work to our that, like needs because we need to get in there, work our hardest, get a break, let the five go in, work their hardest, get a break, and if that happens the whole game, then hopefully we'll be able, we will be able to win things. Something this year has just been lacking, and we're not sure what it is, but like this throughout the last week we've been practicing really hard, and we know that we have to make big changes for us to win because something's not working. So hopefully, what we're doing helps us and we keep like pushing in and playing good defense and we just get back to the way we used to play. Next, Wood will face Lancaster Catholic, the fifth place team from District 3 on Wednesday. You can follow our coverage at BucksCountyCourierTimes.com. In wrestling, Council Rock North is celebrating the end of the high school wrestling season with two PIAA Class AAA medalists. Senior John Dutrow placed third in the three-day tournament at the Giant Center in Hershey and junior Tyler Callender finished fourth. Meanwhile, Council Rock South senior P.J. Steinmetz took fifth at 195 pounds. You can also see photographer Rick Kinsel's footage from CB East's Francesco Fabozzi's medal round in the same championships on our website. And the Flyers got a much-needed win against Buffalo last night. Coach Peter Laviolette explains why he went with goaltender Ilya Berzgalov after a week-long three-game losing streak. I mean, I think you go through everything. You know, you roll through all your options of personnel that's available to you. And, um, you know, I think just coming off of last night, it's, you know, Briz is the guy that needs to be in there, and, and we need to get a win tonight. You know, our group needs to, to dig out of this. So, um, you know, not to put him in there and give him that opportunity doesn't seem right. You can follow sports writer Wayne Fish's Flyers coverage at BucksCountyCourierTimes.com. Now here's a look at what we're working on in the newsroom. Tonight, former Secretary of the Navy and Grace Kelly's first cousin, John Lehman, is scheduled to give a talk at the David Library of American Revolution in Upper Makefield. Reporter Chris English will be covering for a story with video. Also tonight, the Neshaminy Educational Development Committee is expected to see a presentation on new technology that could be used in the district. Reporter Christian Menno will be there. And finally, the New Hope Arts Center is discovering new talent with the help of established artists. Their work is on exhibit through the end of this month, and Gwen Schrift will have all the details. Keep checking BucksCountyCourierTimes.com for all of these stories and the latest local news. I'm Rachel Canelli. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.